Hi everyone, Rebel Coder here again. Today we're going back to DNA Toolkit and we're going to add one function. This function is going to scan a reading frame and will attempt to find a protein in that reading frame. So in the last video, we generated reading frames. We were scanning DNA string, generating codons, triplets of DNA nucleotides, and that's it. Today we need to actually scan what we have generated in our last video and see if that string contains start codon and a stop codon. If it does, we're gonna have to record this whole sequence as a protein and return a list of all proteins we found in that reading frame. Let's go back to our code. So let's run this again. This is where we left off in our last video. We generated six reading frames. So today's function is going to scan a frame like that and it will search for start codon. And if we go back to our structures, we know that the start codon is M and the stop codon is underscore. Today's function is going to scan a frame and generate a protein if it's there. And the second function we're gonna write in our next video is just going to loop through all six reading frames. You might say, why don't we just combine them and have one function that scans all six reading frames. The good practice is always split your functions if you can. So instead of having one really long function, we can have two smaller functions. And there will be some cases where you don't need to scan all six reading frames. You just need to scan one reading frame. So the function we're gonna to implement today is gonna to be very useful. So let me copy and paste that from my snippets. This function might look very complicated, but it's totally not. This function just has two parts. The first one is looking for a start codon to start accumulating all of the nucleotides after M start codon. And as soon as it comes across the stop codon, which is underscore, it will stop and it will add that protein to our protein database here. So this list here will be accumulating our current protein and this one will contain all proteins found in a sequence. Why do we need two lists? Amino acid sequence we're gonna to pass to this function might be very long and it might contain a couple of proteins. So there will be a couple of M start codons and a couple of stop codons. So we have to make sure that we're gonna accumulate the first one we found in here. And then at the end, we're gonna put it into this proteins bank which is a list. Then we're gonna keep scanning that string. We're gonna accumulate it here again and add it to this. So this is going to contain all of the proteins found in this amino acid sequence. And this one is going to be used to accumulate the current protein. This will be much clearer when we go step by step through this function. As I mentioned, we are not going to have an output number 10. This is a sub function for our next function, next video. And I'm going to create this test amino acid sequence just to test our function. Okay. And I'm going to paste this list we copied from here. Okay, let's comment this out for now. We're not gonna need that in this video. So we have created a test reading frame. And now let's pass this to our new function. Okay, it's print. And our new function is called proteins from RF, reading frames. So compute all possible proteins in amino acid sequence and return a list of possible proteins. Okay, that's exactly what we want to do. And we're going to pass our new test reading frame to it. And let's see what it returns. It returns an empty list because we don't have an M, a start codon. Let's simulate that here. Let's do M. And let's say we're gonna introduce a stop codon right here. So we should get sequence from M up till S. And here is our protein. Of course, it's a test string, so it's not a real protein. So we can try moving this somewhere else. Let's say we're gonna introduce that stop codon instead of this V. And let's run it. So it starts from M, T, A, L, V, V, L. M T A L V V L. Let's actually make it wider again for a testing purpose. So now we have our output working. We are providing this test reading frame to our function that has a start codon and has a stop codon. 
and we can see again that it does generate a protein, a fake test protein. Now let's go back to our function and go step by step through that function. And it will become very clear how this function accumulates these values. Okay, we're going to save that and I'm adding this breakpoint. That's where the code is going to stop execution and will allow us to step through the function that it calls. And it's calling this function here and it is going to enter this function and we will see what's happening at every single step here. I'm pressing a five. It's loading a debugger and it stops on this function here. Okay, let me make this window bigger here because that's where the output is going to be. And let me close this off. So we need to step in. So I'm going to press F11 or you can use these buttons here as well. And right away we can see that this function accepted amino acid sequence and that's our fake amino acid sequence, our reading frame that has M start codon and 13 is stop underscore codon. Okay, let's collapse that. And let's go step by step. I'm going to be pressing F10. So now you can see we created two empty lists here and we are gonna enter this main for loop that is going to scan this amino acid list. So let's go step by step. So the first if statement is checking if it's an underscore, if it's a stop codon and it's not because the first amino acid is L. So we can see that AA is equals to L. Is going to go to our next statement and is going to check if it's a start codon M. It is not a start codon either. And it is going to go into this interesting for loop. So this for loop just checks if the length of our current protein list is more than a zero. If it is, it is going to keep accumulating value in that current protein list. If it's empty, meaning we did not find an M protein before, there's nothing to accumulate and this is going to be skipped. Let's go again step by step and you'll see how it works. So our current amino acid is L, so it's going to skip that too. It is going to go to our next amino acid. Our next amino acid is interesting, it's M, so the second one here. And it's not underscored, so this part is going to be skipped and it is jumping to that M part. At this line here, 104, we're just making sure that the current protein length is not zero and it is one, just to make sure that this for loop starts accumulating values. Let's jump into our for loop. Our for loop can see that the length is already one and it should accumulate a first value, which is M start codon. Okay, let's go F10. And now we can see that our first amino acid has been accumulated in this current protein. You have to remember that the length of the current protein list here, one, is not measured by how many characters are in it, but how many strings are in it. So even if we have three M's under one string, in these quotes here, it's still one. So let's go further and let's step through that again. So we're checking it's T, we can see here it's T, so it's not underscore, we're gonna jump here. It's not M either, but we still are accumulating the current protein. So the T is going to go into our current protein. So you can actually view this part here while I step through the function. So it's accumulating all the values and it should stop at our stop codon, which is here. So it is not going to record this part. The last amino acid is going to be S. So let's keep doing it. Okay, we're almost there. Let me scan through quicker. So next one is G and next one is S, right? So we are adding our last amino acid. We can see that that's the protein we've found and that's the another interesting part. We're going back here and it is a stop codon. So this if statement here does a very simple check. It checks if our current protein list contains anything meaning if the length of it is more than one, then we can proceed and add it to our main proteins list. Okay, so we can see the length is one and it has some sort of a protein in it. So this for loop might be a little bit confusing. This for loop is needed to make sure that if we have multiple start positions, multiple M codons, 
they're both are included or how many of those start codons we have are included in current protein. Let me give you a quick example here. So if we have a sequence of, let me just use a random words, okay? We have this and we have a stop codon, right? So it should read from here to here, right? What if we have this string? Let's add a bit more M's and we're gonna add this another start codon position, which is possible. So it should read two proteins, which is this. And then the second one should be this, sorry, should be this. So that's what this for loop does. It checks how many proteins we have accumulated in our current protein and adds them to our main protein list. This line right here checks if it finds M start codon, it appends a new entry in the list. So here we have a one entry in the list. If it would find this scenario, start codon, start codon. So the first time it creates the entry like that. And the second time it finds M, it creates another empty space, which is going to be yet another entry just like that. Okay. So it would be something like that. And every time it finds M, it creates a new entry in a list and keeps accumulating values after that start codon. Let's actually change it back. So code still runs. Okay. And get rid of this. So we're going to keep going through this thing and we can see that it reached S. It appended that protein to our main proteins list here and it keeps going. Okay. Of course, there's nothing to scan for because none of the other ones are stop or start codons. And we are going to return our proteins list. Okay, let's make it larger again. And here is what it returned. So this is it for this function. I hope that going step by step through this function helped you. If you are writing any algorithm yourself and it's not working as you expect it to work, just make sure just hit that F5 button and go step by step and see what is happening on every single line of your code. Okay? So this is it for this video. In our next video, we're going to use this function as a sub function for counting all of the proteins in the reading frames we generate, which are six of them. You can try tackling this problem yourself before the next video comes out, just to see if you can solve this problem. So all you need to do is call this function on all six reading frames that we generate right here and find all of the proteins it can in all these six reading frames. As well as adding this final function in our next video, we're going to apply that function to a real sequence. We're gonna find an insulin protein in a human genome, okay? So after we have added this final function in our next video, we are going to stop, and this is going to be our DNA toolkit. The next two videos, we are gonna do some refactoring after that, meaning we are going to take the code we wrote, clean it up, optimize it a little bit, and wrap it into a class. So I definitely suggest make sure you understand how classes work, not only in Python, but in general, what classes are, as we are going to reuse our DNA Toolkit class in our next videos when we're going to start working on a genome project. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and listening. As always, you can find me in all of these social platforms and as well as our new website, rebelscienced.club. If you still have any questions about this or any other videos, please pop into our Matrix or Telegram chat. We have a growing community right there. These videos are also available in a library platform. So until next time, Rebel Coder, signing out.